So we're here today with Ms. Kayumba Chiwele Tamba Tamba. I'll let her introduce herself in a little bit. But we're going to discuss today uh, social media and mental health because it's a topic that a lot of people are interested in in terms of, you know, what are the pros and cons of using social media as far as it affects mental health. And so we have an expert here on the topic who will tell us more about it. So uh, I'll let her introduce herself and her background and then we'll get right into discussing social media and mental health. So thank you very much for your time and uh, uh, availability to talk to me today and I'm sure this will be helpful to all the people that will be listening. So I'll let you introduce yourself uh, a bit. Okay, yeah. thank you for having me. Absolutely delighted. Um, so as I said, my name is uh, Kayum Bachiwede Tamba Tamba and I'm a clinical neuropsychologist by profession. Um, I wear many hats. I'm a lecturer of psychology. I'm also a practicing psychology and I'm currently serving as treasurer in the executive committee of the Psychology Association of Tanzania. Yeah. Okay, great. So, so we are with the right person then. Yeah. You can tell us a lot more about this. So it's, it's through the Psychology Association of Zambia that I actually uh, managed to get a hold of you. Yes. Uh, so maybe I should give a credit to Paz yes. and let you tell us a little bit about that before we get into the topic. Yeah. Yeah. Well, basically, the Psychology Association is there to or govern the field of psychology in Zambia. Mm -hmm. So we want people to know, firstly, what currently at the final stages of um, finalizing the issue of um, licentiation of psychologists in Zambia to right. practice. Yeah. Okay. So we need to standardize the process and we need to know at what stage can someone pri uh, practice or get their license and so forth. Even um, private practices, organizations, how can they get a license, and okay. the do's and don'ts. Yeah. Great. Well, Apart from that, also we yeah. are academicians, so we share information, do conferences, uh, ABCD. Like you are doing today. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's great to know. I think it's an area that definitely needs regulation in a country yeah, yeah. like ours. Most definitely, and it's yeah. a growing field. Yeah. So that's very good. So let's get right into the topic for okay. today. Social media mm. and mental health. Yeah. Tell us about that. Okay. Um, it's a growing topic currently, obviously, because social media is a part of our lives, we can't deny that everybody you know basically is on social media. Yeah. But then obviously there are detrimental effects if it's used in an unhealthy way. So mm -hmm. there's a, a very strong relationship between your use of social media, how healthy it is, and your mental health. Okay. Yeah. So, so tell us about that. I mean, well, let's start with the benefits maybe. Yeah. What, what would be the benefits of social media from a mental health perspective? From a mental health perspective? Well, um, obviously there are pros and cons, okay, yeah. there are benefits and then also there are uh, the negative effects. With the benefits, I would say you are able to communicate easier mm -hmm. with your loved ones, you can keep up with them, but also on a personal level, mentally, the same way you post something on social media and those comments you get, those likes you get, the reassurance you get, obviously it helps to boost your confidence and your self-esteem and just makes you feel more social. Okay. Yeah. Even if in person that may not be the case. So yeah. social media does boost a lot of people's confidence mm -hmm. in socializing with others because obviously there's more faith to it. Sure. Yeah. Well, I guess that's uh, for me personally, I experienced that because I lost contact with a lot of my friends from secondary school yeah. at some point, uh, over 10 years. Yeah. And uh, when I got on Facebook, I resisted for a long time getting on Facebook. But when yeah. I got there, I connected with nearly my whole class in, wow. in a matter of days. Yeah. So I can see the benefit in terms of connectivity because and, and being connected mm. and so on. But, but so let's look at the downside of it now. Yeah. What, the, the likes and things like that that you mm -hmm. mentioned, you know, what, what can be the so, pitfalls of that? Yeah, so mm -hmm. the unhealthy aspect of it is the problem with those likes that I mentioned, you're, you're getting comments, you're getting likes and things like that. The problem is the effects or the, the gains are temporary or short-lived, mm -hmm. yeah? Okay. So you post a picture, you get likes, but it's temporary. Yeah. And what that does to you is in the event that you do post something and you don't get the reaction that you wanted, the mm. self-esteem is affected. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, sometimes there's also cyberbullying. So cyberbullying is where someone um, uses uh, digital devices to, to cause harm on someone else. So okay. they make to um, say certain things that are harmful, derogatory, and, and, but the most important part is mm -hmm. the receiver has to find that information or um, action as unwanted. 
Oh, I see. Yeah. So, okay. apart from cyberbullying, mm -hmm. also social media use and how the social media use can lead to addiction. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So the addiction comes in where you're obviously we're talking about the self-esteem issues. Sometimes you know you find on social media you're scrolling, you're not mm -hmm. even really looking, you're not talking to anyone, but That's you're just okay. scrolling and looking at people's lives and so forth. So yeah. you do get addicted to that. Okay. And um, on that, mm -hmm. the biological aspect of it is the same way. Someone who's addicted to alcohol and the drug, there's a certain high that they get. Yeah. So, a chemical called dopamine is released in our in our bodies. Okay. So, uh, science has found recently that that actually happens when you're going when you're using social media actively. I see. So the same type of um, a, a feeling that you get when you're addicted to a drug or alcohol okay. is the same thing <sighs> you get when you're addicted to it's social like a media. High that you yeah. Get. So all those likes and all those positive comments, obviously, yeah. and the photos are usually overly edited anyway. Mm, so true. realistically, we don't yeah. look like that. <laughs> but we Most still get the, the high from all the likes and the praises and so forth. True. Okay. Yeah. I was reading about that somewhere that, about what you said, that it's, it's almost like a mm. drug and so yeah. on, that you get this high feeling and yeah. feel good. Yeah. And so a lot of people start chasing that. Exactly. Like you're saying. And so, so there's a... Uh, 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 an urge to post things to get exactly. those likes. Exactly. Yeah, and, and that's how dopamine works. So it's yeah. a feel-good chemical. So you mm -hmm. keep on wanting more and more and more. Yeah. So same thing with social media. So and then when it doesn't happen, when it doesn't happen, now it goes down. Yeah. 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 And that's where now we'll find the mental disorders that we're going to discuss, such as depression and anxiety disorders. Oh, I yeah. see. I see. Okay. Well, that's very interesting. So, I mean, before we get into those, so yeah, or maybe we'll get into them as we discuss yeah. those. There's the issue of time, right? Yeah. Because obviously, like you're saying, sometimes we are um, mm -hmm. just scrolling. And by the way, I read I read an interesting ad at at the restaurant. It said uh, it said we have no Wi-Fi. Pretend you are in the 90s and talk to each other. <laughs> I feel like that should be everywhere. Yeah. And there was one restaurant actually. They were they they would uh, reward you oh, as a table. But, yeah. For not being on your phone, <laughs> so you put your phones in a basket, and uh, the table. If you stay away from your phone, the whole meal will give you something extra or something. Yeah. As a way of encouraging that. But you won't believe how hard it is to just stay away from your phone. I know it's. I've very tried that with friends, and one will eventually say, "You know what? I lose the ticket. <laughs> <laughs> I can't do it anymore. I do it anymore. I have seen so that. It is addictive. It is addictive. Yeah. So so. Um, I mean, that brings me to the question: How much social media is enough? when it comes to how much time you spend because like you're yeah. saying sometimes you're just forever yeah, scrolling yeah, yeah. through yeah. so so is there a guideline or it's individual based what, what is the i would mostly say it's individual based because mm -hmm. obviously based on your personalities and your lifestyle mm -hmm. it will differ okay. but some recent studies by social scientists have maybe suggested mm -hmm. a max of 30 minutes a day that's so which obviously you can spread out into maybe okay. 10 minutes okay. go on social media check my posts and things like that mm -hmm. and then go back to doing what it is i was doing okay. again after a while maybe after a couple of hours 10 minutes I, i'm able to socialize interact yeah. and things like that so a max of 30 minutes a day is what we would call healthy okay yeah well that sounds reasonable because mm -hmm. I, I guess we do spend more time just because yeah. we don't monitor but yeah. actually, I don't know the name of the app, but I think there's apps mm. which can actually monitor how much time or restrict how much time you spend yeah, I have on social media and alert you. Those. Yeah, yeah. Oh, are they effective? Do they work? Well? They are. It depends on your discipline as well, because yeah. if an app tells you and you choose to ignore yeah. it. <laughs> you can still but if you're and... disciplined, you can, you can you know, listen to the app and yeah. just say, okay, I've had enough social media. But on the issue of, um, of um, addiction, yeah. So how, how does one know that they are addicted, addicted. to social media, you know, okay. what, what's the distinction? Okay, mm. so with addiction, yeah. um, with any, anything, it could be a substance, a drug, and social media equally, mm -hmm. you can tell you're addicted when you see that your personal life, your daily function is affected, your productivity is affected. Okay. So if you're indulging into something to yeah. an extent where you find that it's affecting your ability to function, I see. then you know there's something wrong. Okay. So with the issue of social media, like I said, you find that getting to work late every day and you realize it's actually because I was on Facebook. Yeah. Okay. So you're failing to concentrate because you're addicted, you're always, you, you need that dose of just seeing what's happening on you. Yeah, exactly. also The fear of missing out, mm. which is very common. So you just want to know what if something is happening on social media and I'm yeah. behind. 
So okay. if I need to keep on going, it's going back. So, okay. so you can tell by if you feel it's affecting your functioning yeah. daily and productivity with work, concentration, and things like that, then you know there's something that you need okay. to get help. Well, that, that helps a lot. And the fear of missing out is a big thing. It actually yeah. become a recognized uh, abbreviation. Yeah. For yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. That's a, that's a big deal. Yeah. Uh, so um, I think those are, are very uh, important pointers because, like mm. you're saying, if it distracts you from normal day to day functional living, then you know you're addicted. Mm -hmm. And for me, one sign is, you know, when you're out with people and you're forever yeah, on your exactly. phone. Yeah. So even with kids, you're yeah. missing out on your kids or in interacting yeah. with real people yeah, exactly. in real life because you're always uh, checking what's happening on your yeah. phone and things like that. So I think those are good signs to look at in terms of managing one's use of social media. Yeah. So, so let's go into the specific issue now of mm -hmm. depression. Oh, by the way, yeah, before we get into that, mm -hmm. so are there differences in how men and women or age, different age groups use social media from your experience? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, well, there are different research is being conducted globally, obviously, but okay. overall you find that mm -hmm. about 88% of um, people aged between 18 and 29 okay. are socially active on social media. 20, so 89%? 88%. Oh, 88%. Okay, yeah. that's a lot. So the bigger age group is basically youth, adolescents and young adults. I see. Those are the ones who are yeah. using social media the most. Okay. as compared to other age groups. Oh, I see, okay. Yeah. And, and they're the ones, obviously, who are at higher risk of yeah. suffering from the detrimental effects to do with mental health. Because I guess those are also the very uh, uh, ages where people are like very influenced by exactly. what goes on. Exactly, uh, exactly. On Especially their adolescents, they are at an even higher risk than the young adults because for them, their risk perception is very low. Yeah. They can't perceive to say this environment I'm entering is you know, there's risky behavior in there, so True. there could be perpetrators, True. there are people who are there to learn, yeah. there are kidnappings these days, Sure. anything sure. can happen on social media. And I think most social media networks require a minimum age of, is it 16? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, but I do know that, you know, kids can cheat oh. on their age, yeah, so exactly. there are 12 year olds exactly. on social media yeah. who don't know about the world and such yeah. dangers, as you say, yeah. who may be lured by um, bad influences or people with mm. ulterior motives, yeah. uh, but even for the 16-year-olds, it's still a very uh, young age mm -hmm. where influences can be very big on you. Yeah, exactly. Um, so for parents and people like that especially, how does one manage that? Because my okay. kids wanted to be yeah. on social media. My, my son opened an account on Facebook when he was uh, 12, yeah. and I had to tell him to shut it down, shut it that down. you're not old enough yet to be on, yeah. on this. Um, yeah. So, but it's a, it's a very big thing, a lot of parents, in terms of how they manage that, you know. Yeah, it's actually even something we were discussing a couple of days ago. Yeah. It's actually not even more so of the amount of time that they're spending on social media. Mm -hmm. What is actually more dangerous is the content they're being exposed to on social media. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Because so, you have very little influence as a parent exactly. on, on what they can yeah. see. You have no idea how dangerous the cyber environments they're populating are. So. Sure, yeah. sure. So, well, what would parents do? Mm -hmm. um, well, from a psychologist. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. I would just advise, first of all, there's open communication. Okay. Speak to your kids. When they sure. get to a certain age, be, establish that relationship where you can openly speak yeah. to them and just let them know this is what social media is about, exactly. this is what you're exposing yourself to, this is what can happen. Mm -hmm. If something like this happens, these are the results. Okay. But secondly, if they do insist to be on social media, mm -hmm. then you have to involve yourself as a parent. So, be friends with them on yeah. your pages, all of them, so you are aware of who they're interacting with. Exactly. That can be rule number one. So, if you want a social media page, yeah. then you this have to be conditions. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I think that makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. And also, just limiting how much time they spend. So, so, you can just say, during school hours, no social media, you can only get on your phone. Yeah. When you get home between this time and that time. Exactly. Just setting the rules. I think so, because it's a very dangerous world. Um, yeah, but it, it's a very hard field to, to navigate in terms yeah. of how much privacy do you give your child. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I totally get it. <laughs> so it's, a, it's a little balancing act. Uh, but I guess we have a right then to be of age to look after themselves. Yeah. So, so let's go into depression specifically now, because that is my interest in terms of depression, because I think it's a growing problem globally. I think, I think WHO estimates about 300 million people now worldwide have depression, and it is considered one of the biggest causes of disability worldwide uh, currently. 
Uh, but information is lacking and people don't know much about it. So yeah. as far as social media goes with depression, mm -hmm. what can you tell us about that? Okay, so mm -hmm. social media and I won't say because there have actually been some debates that social media and healthy social media use cause depression. Okay. Yeah. But I agree with the assumption that it doesn't necessarily cause it, but there is a strong correlation. Okay. So there are direct factors that are related with unhealthy social media use that may lead to depression. To depression. So the correlation is very strong, I but see. not that social media use itself will cause depression. Okay, I see. Yeah. So, so what would some of those factors be? Okay, so I mentioned cyberbullying uh -huh, okay. and I mentioned also esteem issues. Okay. The issue of esteem may sound simple, but it's really, 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 yeah. it can have a strong effect on someone. So sure. once your self-esteem is gone, you yeah. begin to feel depressed, you begin to isolate yourself from loved ones, you mm -hmm. begin to feel um, unattractive and things like that, and yeah. you stop socializing, even in person especially. Sure. So that can now, the isolation itself and loneliness can now start leading you into a depression. Okay. Cyberbullying, we talked about cyberbullying, this has been happening a lot, even in Zambia yeah. especially. Yeah, yeah. You have pictures of someone posted on social media, People are posting all sorts of derogatory things, exactly, yeah. insults, bad language, and yeah. things like that. So, uh, if something people's like nude photos, you want to have a breakup and things exactly. like that. Yeah, yeah. And cyberbullying, I feel, is far worse off than um, mm -hmm. the regular bullying in person. Because with cyberbullying, the audience is large. It's a large Everyone one. sees it. And, and it's permanent. Is more, yeah, exactly. People it's permanent, it's more embarrassing. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So those are the things that may lead to a depression. Yeah. And we've, we've seen a lot of suicidal cases in our young who are taking their lives because of what they're going through on social media. Yeah, so. unfortunate. That, that is so. So, I mean, you mentioned that if you have a very interesting issue of yeah. isolation. Yeah. And uh, so, I mean, in my experience, isolation is a big indicator. It sometimes can be a cause, but sometimes a consequence of depression. Yeah, yeah. So, in terms of social media and isolation, how does that work exactly? In terms of social media and isolation? Yeah. So, the more time you're spending on social media, it could be either or, yeah? Mm -hmm. So, the more time you start spending on social media, okay. the more you isolate yourself from people. From real life. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So, you're always on your phone. Probably sure. because of the high you're getting. Mm -hmm. You're getting mm -hmm. likes, you're getting some comments, you're relating with certain people, laughing jokes, sharing jokes, and things like that. Yeah. So, you find it's easier to socialize online. Sure. than in person. Okay. But as a result also of um, the depression, when you're depressed, mm -hmm. yeah. obviously you're you're gonna now isolate yourself from people. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. certain things that happen on social media, like I said, they can say things to you that make you lose your self-confidence. You start looking at yourself in a negative light and believing, yeah. okay, you know what, I'm not as attractive as I thought I was, I'm not as sociable as I thought I was, and yeah. I don't have a, a bright personality. Sure. So now in person you also start isolate, isolating yourself because on social media they've already made you feel like this is I the kind of person. Of who yeah. you are. So in person yeah. you tend to isolate yourself as well. Okay. Yeah. Well I think it's it's a very big problem. And like you're saying that it takes us away from real life interaction yeah. and we are always uh, you know online. That becomes yeah. our world. Exactly. So you're isolating yourself from, from real but I guess I guess there's an escapist kind of angle to it as well, right? Yeah. I mean, somebody's going through a rough time in yeah. real life. Is it common that they'll go to social media as a way of hiding away? Yeah, 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 yeah. of uh -huh. course. Yeah. Now, on the, especially in adolescents, yeah? Yeah. There's a danger with that. You find an adolescent is mm -hmm. feeling excluded in real life, or they're feeling certain pressures, and they tend to isolate themselves. Yeah. Maybe there's a certain page or group online that they've found themselves relatable. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. There are very dangerous groups that I've come across even personally where they yeah. are maybe just discussing depression. You're a teenager, you're feeling depressed, you find the page online, yeah. there are other teenagers within that group who are equally depressed and you start sure. to relate. Sure. And every day you're sharing, I went through this today, oh yeah, I went through that as well. Mm -hmm. But the dangers of that is when it gets to extreme levels, yeah. they start sharing things such as suicidal ideas. Exactly, yeah. And that can be a strong trigger. Yeah, yeah. Um, a couple, 2016, mm -hmm. a young man in Kitsway took his own life. He was 16 years old. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. He took his own life, and before, there was a certain group he was sharing with his friends. Okay. And he would post about it on for weeks on end. They yeah. would joke about Satanism and things like that, but then he started posting about, um, I'm going to kill myself. Yeah. Oh. About three days before he killed himself, he posted a picture of himself with a, with a noose around his neck. Oh. And his friends were urging him, like, well, we dare you, do it, really? do it, do it, yeah. And oh. three days later, he did hang himself. Oh. But he was actually proud as he was talking about it. Yeah? That I'm going to do this. Yeah, I'm going to do it. I'm very proud that his friends, friends were urging. Yes, so exactly. So it seemed like a good idea. Exactly. Which brings me back to the point I mentioned earlier. Yeah. It's 
What's more scary is the content and the pages they're exposing themselves to, their information, their environment. Yeah. Because if yeah. you're feeling like you can relate to these people, whatever they say will count, and you feel like, yeah, exactly. This is who I am. But I would have thought a group that. like that would be dissuasive rather than persuasive, persuasive. in terms of exactly. encouraging so, people to take yeah, their own life. Yeah. There are millions, billions of pages on Facebook and some of them yeah. are quite helpful. There are a lot of sub depression support groups where people will yeah. say, okay, no, I do this. And then the others are obviously yeah. more in the negative. So that would qualify as a form of cyberbullying in a sense, yeah, would it exactly. not? Encouraging somebody to exactly. throw themselves it does. because you're making them feel worthless yeah. and that their life is not worthwhile yeah. and, and so on. And which is why the perception of risk needs to be increased sure. in adolescents and young users, just to understand, to say, yeah. even just a, a simple text can mess with someone's mind and exactly, make them yeah. do drastic things. True. Well, I, I, did, uh, I did see a very disturbing case of uh, one group that actually had a, had a suicide challenge, wow. uh, yes. where they were saying, you know, within the next so many days, let's see how many people in here can kill themselves. Oh, wow. And uh, uh, not related to that group, but mm -hmm. there was a case of a, 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 a lady who broadcast a suicide live on Facebook. So I think those are the kinds of things that you, you mean in terms of content and what exactly. people are encouraged to do and, yeah. and, and not to do. Yeah. Now imagine a young mind who doesn't even have a strong will to exactly. know right from wrong. Yeah. They see such things and they yeah. say, I want to try it well. And parents and guardians usually don't know what's yeah. going on. Exactly. But, but on the... On the Backside, I guess there's some benefit in terms of one can kind of group that is actually supportive. Mm, mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In Very terms true. of the content, if I'm depressed, yeah, maybe I'll find a, an encouraging group that will help me get over it or that's absolutely cope with it. Absolutely true. I'm yeah. actually also actively involved with about okay. two groups on Facebook okay. where we just offer support for people who share information. I'm depressed, so new, new members will come in. Old yeah. members will share. Today I had a breakdown. Today I had a okay. relapse and things like that. So. We just share and strengthen each other. Even on WhatsApp, we run a couple of support groups where oh, we're I sharing see. information. So okay. social media, can, like we said, it does yeah. have pros and cons. It okay. can be used effectively and again yeah. it can end up being I guess the danger is for one to know which group is which good, one, which group yeah, is bad exactly. before you <laughs> get too deep into it. That can be a bit of a, a minefield. Mm -hmm. But I'm happy you have those groups. So I, I, I would uh, love to join uh, uh, those groups at some point and see uh, what kind of uh, environment that is. So tell us more about your the groups you said you have on social media. Is it free for anyone to join yep. or so, free so for what groups are those? Maybe you so can we, tell the, um, well, what we had done is we had started one on Facebook, but we thought it didn't work well, so we okay. ended up starting one on WhatsApp. Ah, okay. So with WhatsApp, anyone can join. You can just inbox our Psych Health Sunday page, okay. and we'll be able to just say, I would like to join a depression support. support. So, so you can join. And they're so actually very, very helpful. So your page is Psych Health Zambia? Psych Health Zambia, yes. Okay, okay. And then you can request to join your the WhatsApp group. Yeah. So it's free. It's open to anyone worldwide or just? Anyone worldwide. Yeah. Well, most of it, well, right now we only have people from Zambia, but anyone yeah. worldwide is welcome to join. Okay, that's very, that's very helpful. Uh, if it's a free support group, uh, if you need help, you can look at Psych Health Zambia on uh, Facebook yeah. and request to join their WhatsApp group. But I guess with, even on Facebook, you do post useful information. Yes, yes, yes. That one can benefit um, from. Yeah. So both on our Psychology Center page and our Psychology Association of Zambia page. Yeah. So with PAS, we've been posting a lot of helpful information. We also share information on where you can get help. Okay. Um, some news. So just follow our pages, and you'll be able to at least be in the loop on mental health issues. Okay. So let's go back to the issue of addiction. Uh, yeah. Remember the question I wanted to ask. So, I, I, I recognize that I'm addicted to social media. Yeah. What help is there? What help is there? Where do okay. I get help? Where do you get help? Mm. You can come to us. Okay. <laughs> I psych help. Yeah, I psych help. Okay. But, well, maybe before you do uh, decide to seek help. Yeah. It could be at a stage where you're able to manage it. Okay. So, there are certain things that you can do maybe just to avoid, mm. you know, yeah. going into deep. So, uh, earlier I mentioned the issue of... Um, quality assurance where you just moderate the amount of time you spend on Use social media. the apps we talk about, yeah, which yeah. monitor your exactly. social so media just, usage. Yeah, so you could reduce it to 30 minutes a day. Okay. And then just mm -hmm. make sure you're, you're being productive. Okay. Yeah? Also, mm -hmm. make sure that you're interacting 
you're putting in as much effort in interacting in reality than you are in real life than yeah than, than you are in yeah. social media so just kind of moderate it and see just okay i talk okay. to people on social media but do i see them in person yeah and people who matter to you the most spend more time with them and just yeah okay and then thirdly uh no phone time before you sleep mm -hmm. and also have such rules as no phone during meals during so meals, lunches yeah. and dinners and things like that just put your phone away okay. so it can be a rule in the house for the whole family yeah yeah but even as you go out into and and if, if it's not a rule in the house yeah. your kids will also get into that and as they go out it will be instilled in them and they, they just they'll stay you know, away yeah say i shouldn't be on my phone i'm around people it's rude sure and unhealthy yeah, yeah. we have that rule of my yeah. kids Dinner Just time phones on the side. Yeah. So we talk and yeah, you know interact. Yeah. So uh, they'll grow up with that and still be Exactly. Because yeah. it can be a big distraction these days. I mean other than social media you have the T V. Yeah. Uh, so see they are on, <laughs> on the screen. You know, yeah, that's it. Or, yeah. that or the screen, other screen, yeah. And the interaction <laughs> yeah, on that personal yeah. level is very restricted. Oh, another so, trick is yeah. also turning off your notifications. So just go oh, to your yeah. settings and turn off all notifications. Exactly. I so you that. only see them. Yeah, yeah that's that, good. Because, because it's so distracting. Yeah, these apps are created for excessive use. Exactly. On purpose, obviously. Exactly. They are making money out of it. So <laughs> the they want you to be there. The yeah. So the notifications will keep popping up at any time. Even useless ones. True, true. Yeah. yeah. So so that you stop what you're doing and you start concentrating on the Every group, so, every... Exactly. Yeah. I, so just turn I actually... Uh, I mean... Apps like Facebook will even yeah. notify you by SMS. Exactly. If you choose. I get those. Or by email. I need to switch that off. Yeah, you need someone <laughs> like, oh, how much is enough? I mean, so I get notified on my phone, I get notified on the email, the I get emails. notified by SMS. Yeah. You can forever be be uh, be checking your messages on social media. Yeah. I do remember I, I once took, oh, not once, but I've done it several times where I take a break from social media mm. up to two or three months at times. Oh yeah? What would you say about how does, that? How does that work out? I think it's very good. It's a very good idea. Yeah. You come back feeling refreshed and you're not even as inclined to keep on checking your phone because you've managed exactly. to stay without it yeah. for a long time. So it's very refreshing. But you know what I found about that is it actually also makes you feel lighter mentally. Yeah. Because I was reading uh, an article that said social media is draining on you mentally. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. we take it as, as a light thing but yeah. they say making a decision about what post to like mm -hmm. and dislike mm -hmm. uses mental resources exactly so you, when you're scrolling through you're deciding should i like this post should i not like it yeah. so already that's the decision process should yeah. i share it it's another yeah. decision process yeah. so they actually found that the more you use social media the more mentally exhausted you become exactly so it's not actually refreshing at the end of the day it exhausts you mentally so you have less mental energy for other things that are more productive Absolutely. So after social media breaks, I just felt lighter. I spent yeah. more clarity in terms of thinking, and yeah. I was more productive because I could focus on things, and, things. Yeah. And, and not be distracted. So maybe that's something else. Yeah. So we, we focused a lot on mm. Facebook, Instagram, those kinds of apps. Mm. What about apps like WhatsApp? Mm -hmm. Those kinds say, of social media. Yeah. Is it the same or are they slightly I say, different? I would say it's pretty much the same these days, especially since WhatsApp also has statuses. Oh, yeah. So you find yourself just it's looking at people's statuses. <laughs> oh, is this person? Where have they traveled to? What is the car have they bought now? Exactly. Who has babies now? Oh, yeah, like yeah. You can still about? see the same information. Yeah. I guess so. I so it's pretty so. much the same. Yeah. But what I like about WhatsApp is that's where most of these groups can actually be more intimate. So sure. with WhatsApp groups, you're able to actually chat. For instance, the therapy group I talked about. Yeah. So a lot of people have come on board, and it's it's quite quite helpful. Okay. Yeah. yeah. How to cope? Someone group. will share. Oh, that happened to me. So how I coped was by doing ABCD. Yeah. So it's just the way support groups work in person. Okay. Doing WhatsApp support groups to help. I guess so. Mm -hmm. So also it's a matter of choosing what groups to belong exactly. to and what not to. Exactly. I do remember yeah. uh, five months ago I had to send apologies to several groups mm. and just say I'm removing myself from the group because I don't think I'm contributing much and I'm not mm. gaining much from it mm. because mm. also I found it's it's a distraction in terms of getting notifications yeah. and you know a lot of groups will be set up for a certain purpose but yeah. end up just sharing jokes all day yeah. and flooding your your phone with yeah. media that you have Very to keep deleting <laughs> and then you end up missing the important messages somewhere in between exactly. because they're just going to ignore everything exactly. they're just joking so all those I had to kind of take myself out and just remain with a very crucial few groups. So I guess those are kinds of yeah. social media hygiene 
We yeah. talk about you know yeah. how to manage your social media and, and make sure your time is uh, is spent well. Okay. So one last issue on the sure. on social media. Mm-hmm. Um, so I I saw a story on social media on Facebook about a month ago mm-hmm. of a poet that committed suicide. Mm-hmm. And I was curious, so I went to his Facebook profile and I actually found that for a long time, over a year or so, he had been posting mm. very dark kind of posts. Mm. Down, you know, very dark images yeah. of death. Uh, I mean, his poetry was very dark about, you know, dying and things like that. So in my mind, I was thinking, well, he is somebody who obviously posted things that pointed to the fact that they had they yeah. were going through things. Yeah. Why did we catch it? Exactly. So, so I guess that's my question is, if I see somebody going through such a thing mm-hmm. on social media, what, what should I do? Reach out to them. Because all these are warning signs. Yeah. When someone, obviously, unusually doesn't even post certain things or talk in a certain way, and then you yeah. see a shift in their type of posts and their, the way they're engaging with people, sure. that's those, all those are warning signs and cries for help. Yeah. But it's not easy. First of all, to admit it to yourself that you're depressed exactly. is not an easy thing because yeah. usually people are thinking, okay, no, this is me, not me, it can happen to me, mm-hmm. and then you realize mm-hmm. it's actually happening. So for you yeah. to even open up to someone else is harder. Exactly. So you start now posting messages, subliminal posts, so just posting certain things that you're feeling yeah. to try and release, you know, all that um, emotion. emotion. Yeah. Yeah. True. So reach out to them and just say, hey, are you okay? How are yeah. you? Do you need someone to talk to? Yeah. I guess a lot of people don't know how to handle that. Yeah, maybe. yeah. No, I absolutely In get In terms it. of, yeah. you know, how do you help somebody? How do you approach them? What do you I say to them? It. Sometimes it may be someone you're not close to or you can't engage to like yeah. that. So it's difficult for you. So it will be straining. Why are you coming to us? Exactly. Yeah. So sometimes if you know someone who they are closer to, Okay. It's easier to just say, okay, look, listen, I'm a bit worried. Would you mind just checking on them and seeing if they're fine? I guess so. Yeah. Okay, that's a useful tip uh, yeah. to, to have. I was I had a scary experience mm. recently. I wrote an article about depression, mm. and uh, uh, somebody saw it on my Instagram, and it was about almost midnight. I was about to go to bed, and they texted yeah. me. I was not even friends with connected with wow. them on Instagram, yeah. but they texted me and said, "Help me." Oh wow. So I said, so obviously mm. I was alarmed. They said, yes, I'm here. What's the problem? So this mm. person, and they didn't use the room, a real name. They said, I'm, I've been feeling low mm. and I've been thinking about tell, taking my life. Oh. And it ended with, I think tonight is the night I'll do it. Oh. So in desperation, I was, I was like, no, no, don't do anything. Talk to me. I'm here, you know, yeah. and I call you because, you know, Instagram has a calling yeah. function. Uh, so I tried to call nothing, I tried to text back nothing, and uh, it was a very bad time because for almost a week there was just silence. silence. Oh, and I was like, well, I was I the last person this yeah. person talked to? And yeah. I had no way of reaching out, I didn't know their friends, I didn't know anyone. Yeah. Um, so that was quite a scary experience for me. But fortunately, a week later they texted back and said, I'm fine. Oh. And, you know, then we continued the conversation. But I think so. My point, I guess, is there are a lot of people looking for help out mm-hmm. there that mm-hmm. even their close associations may not may be appropriate. Yeah, Maybe they're looking for somebody who is a stranger to talk yeah, to because it's true. easier to relate yeah. to somebody that won't, they feel won't judge you. That's exactly what I was going to say. Obviously, yeah. when you're talking to someone you're related to, mm-hmm. your advice will be biased. So yeah. I know you, so my advice will be coming from a point of view where I have care or love for you or when yeah. you relate in a certain way. Mm-hmm. So. It needs to come from someone who's, you know, advising you from an objective point of view. Yeah. So the best thing is to seek professional help, I should sure. say. But sure. also, reaching out to a stranger is fine. Someone who you identify and say, okay, look, this mm-hmm. person seems to care about someone who's going through what I'm going through. They seem mm-hmm. to know a lot. So the same way that um, individual identified and saw you post about depression, they, yeah. they saw that you knew what you were talking about. So they For reached sure. out to you. Okay. It's easier. Okay. Than talking to someone you know. Exactly. And usually people will just tell you to just brush it off. You, you'll be fine. You'll be fine. Yeah, your life is good. It's the last thing you should <laughs> say to someone who depressed. Exactly. Exactly. Well, I am doing another video on on you know what to say or not mm-hmm. to say, how you can best help somebody mm-hmm. that's going through depression. Okay. Um, so yeah, I would like to talk to you about that some other time, but Glad for now I think we've <laughs> we've talked a lot about social media and depression. Yeah. So. I think bottom line, if I can summarize 
or is there's pros and cons. It can be yeah, good, no, can be bad. Can be bad. Um, so it's just how we manage it. Mm. But do you have exactly. any last words, any last message for people that are listening to this? Um, stop cyberbullying. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. That's the number one thing I, I want to talk sure. about because I feel like it's an issue that people take lightly. Okay. Yeah, even just an LOL. Someone posts something and just an LOL is yeah. enough to cause someone to lose their mind. I see. So just, just know. Whatever you say that you know will hurt the other person. Mm-hmm. There are certain pages in Zambia even about fashion. Someone who posts what they're wearing, people will start laughing and calling them and things like that. Exactly. Okay. So all those things are just unnecessary. So just... Yeah. Be mindful of how you talk to people on social media. Sometimes it may be funny, you may think it's funny, but think about how it will affect the other person in their life. Okay. Just know, people have taken their lives over such things. So, yeah. yeah. So I guess cyberbullying is something you're very passionate about. I am. I, I did say last few years, but maybe we should cover it a little bit. Are there, are there laws in our country or in other countries about cyberbullying? In our country, none. And I wish we could have some. Okay. But in certain American states, laws mm-hmm. have been put in place. Okay. For cyberbullying, so there are certain laws say if you do this, if you say that, yeah. you can so be you can arrested. Someone can somebody you. who yeah. is bullying somebody online. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Right now we don't have any, but I really hope that's something that the government can get. Yeah. I guess that's a big issue. Well, it's a, it's a mind opener for me because I didn't think of it from the perspective of mm. like these things people comment about mm-hmm. how people are dressed yeah. or politicians yeah. and yeah. prominent people like that. I kind of thought of it as teenagers, but. Mm-hmm. You've kind of opened my mind that it affects everyone. Exactly, it's across all age. All Obviously, ages. mostly teenagers because they yeah. are the most prone to and most vulnerable. Yeah, most vulnerable. Yeah, most vulnerable yeah. it really can affect anybody. But still, everybody, everybody yeah. is affected. Yeah. Well, I hope we can cover that uh, issue uh, at another time. Yeah. But uh, I do appreciate your time today, and thank you very much for your insight. Uh, I've learned a lot, and I'm sure it's been useful for people that are listening or, and watching this. Uh, if you have any questions, don't uh, hesitate to contact me or go to the Psych Health page to ask for more, uh, ask uh, for clarity. Or if you need help, mm-hmm. contact any one of us, and we'll put you through in touch to the relevant person that can help you. Yeah. So thank you very much today, and uh, yeah, enjoy the rest of your day.